Thank you, Father Ed. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon. Before we begin, when I was here, Father Eugene was the best group. Is that still the case? No. <laughs> I don't mean to arouse any competition or anything. But to Abbott Melvin, to Father Redwin, to St. Benedict's staff, administrators, and family, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to have the last words with the class of 2016. To the class of 2016, congratulations. can tell by your, your roots that some of you are graduating summa cum laude, some of you are graduating magna cum laude, and some of you are just graduating. Thank you, laude. That's okay. <laughs> All of you got here, and for that, I give you the highest praise. To the class of 2016's parents, guardians, moms, brothers, sisters, and anyone who supported them along the way, Thank you as well, because without you, it wouldn't be here. I'd like to begin today by telling you a short story about two kids, two students. But before I do, I need a little bit of help from you guys. Can everyone close their eyes for me? Please, close your eyes. Right. So, student A, is an honor student. He goes to one of the best prep schools in America. He plays the trumpet, he plays the drums. He taught himself how to read music. He lives in the suburbs of Newark. He's also captain of his football team, captain of his basketball team. He likes to watch Shark Tank. He's an active participant in his church community. After high school, he received the full academic scholarship to college and was selected to participate in a pilot program for gifted students. So I think it's safe to say, this guy was a little bit of a geek. Now student B, he went to an underfunded public school. There weren't enough textbooks in his school. The kids had to share books. His neighborhood was plagued with gang violence. Many of his friends were shot, killed, some were murdered, some were spent time in prison. He has to walk through a metal detector to enter his building. Most of his teachers would rather not be there trying to teach kids who really don't care. He lived with a single adopted mother until he was 17. At that time, she passed away. He's seen his biological mom a few times sporadically throughout his life. He doesn't know anything about his dad. After high school, he sold dope and spent three years in prison for armed robbery. Picture each of these students and tell me what you see. You don't have to say it out loud. Please be honest, no one's gonna judge you. Now open your eyes. So am I student A or student B? Am I a geek or a menace? The truth is, I'm both. See, I spent most of my life caught in between Categories and definitions, how I'm perceived and who I really am. Boxes and stereotypes. The fact of the matter is, I didn't fit in. And I used to think that that was a curse. It wasn't until later in my life that I realized it's a blessing. It was truly a blessing. See, when you don't fit in, you're forced to look at life through many different angles and, and various vantage points. You gain knowledge and life lessons from disparate places and disparate people. And for better or for worse, these life lessons have shaped me. So who am I? In the words of the great Sean Carter, allow me to reintroduce myself. <laughs> I'm a security engineer on the cyber defense and intelligence team at Beckton Dickinson. Beckton Dickinson is the world's largest medical technology and device manufacturer. 
Simply, I and a team of hackers help protect our computing environment against global threats, foreign and domestic. I'm also an ex-felon. I spent three years in prison for participating in an armed robbery while I was attending the University of Delaware. All of this happened after graduating in 2002. Recovering from those bad decisions has to be the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. As Father Red has recounted uh, many times, it took me five minutes to consider the actions, about 15 minutes to execute it, and I'm dealing with the collateral of those decisions for the rest of my life. So when asked to be here with you guys today, I thought long and hard. It wasn't that long ago that I was sitting right where you guys are sitting. And to be honest, I don't remember my commencement speaker's message. <laughs> so I wanted to, given the opportunity, say something that will resonate with you guys. I wanted to say something that you could take with you as you transition to the next phase in your life. So if you don't remember who I am, if you don't remember much else about this day, please remember these three things that I'm about to share with you. Always, always, always work hard. Throughout the course of my studies, I read a book by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers. Outliers in Outliers, uh, Malcolm Gladwell defines this group of people who consistently perform at a level that's statistically implausible. And the correlating factors between these high performers has nothing to do with their natural ability or their natural talent. He references something called a 10,000 hour rule. They simply put in the hard work. They practice. And so I wanted to make sure that I convey to you that you will be challenged in life, but as long as you work hard and you continue to press forward and remember what the sign in the HAB says, Benedict takes up, you can overcome. Secondly, be men of godly character. A lot of people are concerned with their image. I'd like you to take it a step further and be a man of godly character. See, your image is who you are when you're on the field, who you are when you're at work. Your character is who you are when there's no one around but God. Amen. And also from this moment on, I want you guys to know that the world is always watching. That's always been true, but it's especially true now in this world in this, of age of digital and social media. You never know who's gonna know about a decision that you made or something that you thought that you did in secret. So in the words of Mike Scanlon, live your life as if everything you do is gonna be a headline in a newspaper. And if something that you're about to do, you wouldn't want to be a headline, then maybe you should think, rethink whether or not it's worth doing it. We, us, we can afford to sleepwalk through life. Be awake, be conscious, and be deliberate. Everything that you do, all of your actions, make sure they're congruent with who you guys are as Benedict's men. My third point, never stop building substantial relationships. People often talk about the importance of networking, but I believe you should take that a step further as well and build substantial relationships because it's all about people, it's all about people, it's all about people. Who do you know? Who mentors you? Who do you mentor? Who's your advocate? Who's your sponsor? Who speaks up for you when you're not in the room? Today, you join a global community. Who in that community knows you? Networking shouldn't just be an information exchange and a phone call when you need something. Continue to build strong relationships. Today you guys are, I'm sorry. You are who knows you and equally as important, you are who you, are who you know and equally as important, you are who knows you. Today you join a long line of gravies whose energy and intellect have lifted this school beyond heights that its founders couldn't have even imagined. And I know that many of your friends from your neighborhoods where you've grown up can't relate to this Benedict's experience, 
They can't relate to the transition that you're making. And they can't relate to what it is to be a Benedict's man. When you, where you're going, you'll quickly discover that many of the people there can't relate to where you just came from or what you've just gone through. So you guys also are in the same unique space that I was in. So your vantage point, like mine, will also be unique. Embrace that uniqueness. Be confident in your heritage. Be confident in your authenticity. There's no litmus test for authenticity. You are who you are, period. Black, white, gay, straight. And the fact that you're doing whatever you're doing as a black, white, gay, or straight man makes whatever you're doing a black, white, gay, or straight thing. So as you go to leave your marks on the world, you will be challenged. Please remember all of the lessons that you've learned. Remember the sacrifices that your families and the people who care about you have made for you. Remember the relationships that you've formed. Class of 2016, look to your left, please. Now look to your right. These are the people who will support you for the rest of your life. If you look to the back of the room, I have Victor Ribeiro, I have Roosevelt Donat, my friend Kumar Scott. These are all men that I met at Benedict's, and I'm 32 now, and these are my best friends. One of our most fundamental precepts here is, whatever hurts my brother hurts me. Believe that. Live that. You are ready. You've been equipped. Before our time ends today, a lot of you are maybe familiar with Mark Onion. Mark Onion was my English teacher. And in our English class, we read a book by William Shakespeare called Hamlet. And one of the lines that's always resonated with me from Hamlet is this, above all, to thine own self be true. There's this little voice inside all of you. That little voice is the culmination of all the lessons that you've learned and all the experiences that you've had, good and bad. That voice is the voice of wisdom. That voice is the voice of God. So listen to that voice. I hope that something that I said today resonates with you. Congratulations again to the class of 2016. Godspeed, Bula Bula. Yeah.